Alrighty, this is going to be a very quick video on how to fix the DUSMC if you're running certain mechanical horns and it's having issues. This is going to solve the issues. So this is a Simplex 2901-9806. It's a mechanical horn that is causing a lot of problems recently, as in it's doing this. It's supposed to be doing March time right now, but obviously it's not. So what you're going to need is a 10 UF at least 24 volt capacitor. This one is a 63 volt. And as long as it can handle over 24 volts, you should be good. I wouldn't go anywhere above like 100 volts. But if you already own a capacitor and it's 10 UF and it's over 24 volts DC, it should work. But if you're going to buy a capacitor um, and you want to just buy this exact one, this is a 63 volt 10 UF polarized capacitor. And I'll put a link in the description for where you can buy this. So essentially these capacitors, they have a long leg and a short leg. If the legs have been cut or there's not a long one, they also indicate the polarity by a white or a, even a different colored line. So on the side of the capacitor, there's going to be a side with a line on it. And that's going to indicate what direction you want. So either you're going to have the long end of the leg be on the bottom, or you want the white line on top. So what I mean by this is on the DUSMC, there is a programming port right here, and you can get to the front of it by removing it from this faceplate. This is a prototype one. Yours will probably look different. But anyway, there's four Phillips screws that you're just going to want to take out with a screwdriver. And then you're going to simply get this off and it'll look like this. It might look slightly different. This is a revision six board. Uh, you may have a revision four, a revision, a revision, a revision four or revision five. That was a really bad stutter. Um, this port here is going to look exactly the same. It might look a little different in this area, but this is going to look exactly the same. And on this port, you're going to want to find, if you angle it with the lettering towards the top, you're going to want to go to the port, and you're going to find the top left hole. And you're going to take the short leg of the capacitor, or orient it so, so the white line on the capacitor is facing upward. And you're going to plug the capacitor in vertically, like this. And then to make it fit back under the faceplate easier, you can bend it sideways. So the long end is going to be in the very, er, sorry, the short end of the capacitor is going to be in the very top hole. And then the hole directly underneath the top left is going to be where the other side of the capacitor plugs in. So if I put this pillow over the top to make it a bit less loud, it should work. As you can see, it is working perfectly fine now that we've added this capacitor. And then to seal it back up, you can just screw the faceplate back on, and it should fit perfectly. The only thing you want to be conscientious of is this right here is the MCU reset button. If you accidentally close it to where it stays pressed down, it won't allow the chip to run. So you just want to make sure this button is clear, and then you can fit the faceplate back on. So yeah, hopefully this video helps anyone with issues. And yeah, thank you for watching.